You may be seated, and if you would turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, my subject today, activating the blessings of Abraham. How do you activate and receive the blessings of Abraham into your life? This is a powerful word from the Lord because the blessings of Abraham, they belong to you. The Bible is called the New Testament or the New Covenant or the will of God, and you have a right to certain things. But if you don't know what you have a right to, how will you ever obtain them? And one of the great blessings is found in the Galatians chapter 3 where it says, If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. Abraham was one of the greatest men in the Bible, and he's called the father of the faith. And if you belong to Jesus, you are the seed of Abraham. And everything that belongs to Abraham belongs to you, which brings me to my text. Hebrews 11 and 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place that he should receive afterwards, receive for an inheritance, obeyed. He obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. Hallelujah. When God spoke to Abraham, he obeyed. And that's how you activate the blessings of God. God spoke to Abraham and said, Abram, get out. And God said, if you'll get out, then I'll show you. And after I show you, I'll bless you. And after I, I'll make you. And after I make you, I'll bless you. And after I bless you, I'll make you a blessing. I want to encourage you to get your life in divine order because God wants to bless you. And then God wants to make you a blessing so we can evangelize the world for Jesus. My subject this morning, activating the blessings of Abraham. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the word of God. It's a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. Every promise of God is yes. And Lord, help us to tap into the rich resources of your word. And Lord, to activate our faith through obedience so that we can receive what you have purposed for our lives. Thank you for the anointing to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. Thank you for listening here. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you belong to Jesus, the Bible says you are the seed of Abraham. Well, what does that mean? Well, go check Abraham out. There's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and all the other seed of Abraham. So see how God blessed them, and you have a right to the same blessings that they had. Look at Galatians 3 and 9. It says, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. God says, you are Abraham's seed and as according to the promise. But then in chapter 4, verse 1, look at what God says. That the heir, as long as he is a child, different nothing from a servant though he be Lord of all. Now, that's what this church is all about. We are a loving, growing church, bringing hurting families to a healing Jesus, bringing people out of childhood into maturity so that they can know what belongs to them as a child of God. And the Bible says as long as you remain a child, even though you are Lord of all, you will get none of it. You have to know what belongs to you, and you have to claim what belongs to you. We've got people who don't come into sanctuary and don't go to Sunday school, and they never grow into what God has purposed for their life. I, I, I study, and I pray, and I prepare a message so God's people can be empowered so they can live above the storms of life. The storms are going to come, but what are you going to do when you hit the hard places? You better be equipped with the Word of God. And that's what this church is all about, to bring people into maturity so what they can see what really belongs to them in Christ. You are Abraham's seed and as according to the promise through Jesus, and you need to be able to claim everything that belongs to you. And one of the greatest things that is, belongs to you is found in Galatians chapter 3. Look at Galatians 3 and 13. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. 
And then it goes on to say that the blessings of Abraham might come on you. Hallelujah. So we have a right to claim the good things that Abraham had. We have a right to claim the good things that Isaac had and, and Jacob had and Joseph had and all the other seed of Abraham. And what a tremendous blessing that we find as we look into each of their lives. And the blessings of Abraham, they belong to you. And if you're going to claim the blessings of Abraham, you've got to know what belongs to you. There are thousands of promises in this book. They're all yes. And if you don't know those promises, then you will never walk in the maturity that Christ has purposed for your life. Amen. So what we want to do is look into the Word of God and see what belongs to us. And you can't live in what you don't know any more than you can come back from where you've never been. I said you can't live in what you don't know any more than you can come back from where you've never been. And the church needs to know what belongs to them. And one thing that belongs to us is we are redeemed. Amen. Not by corruptible things, but we are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ as of a lamb without spot and without blemish. Hallelujah. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. Well, Pastor, what is the curse of the law? Well, Deuteronomy chapter 28, it mentions all of that misery, spiritual death, poverty, physical disease, broken homes, lost children, early death, all of that suffering that humanity goes through is the curse of the law. Amen. But Christ has redeemed us from all of that. Look at three people and tell them, I am blessed and highly favored of God. I am blessed and highly favored of God. I am blessed and highly favored of God. See, every time you do that, you're releasing faith, and it makes the devil mad every time you do it. He doesn't want you to realize that you are blessed and highly favored of God. The devil does not want you to realize that you are blessed with the blessings of Abraham. He wants to keep you earthbound and keep you from tapping into the spirit world. Because once you tap into God, you tap into omnipotence. And what I can't do, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I'm not going in my strength. Praise God, I feel a little shout and a dance coming on. I'm going in the strength of the Most High God. Hallelujah. And my God can do anything. Your God can do anything. All things are possible with God, and all things are possible to him that believes. Not just some things, but all things. Hallelujah. So put your name in there and say, God, this is possible because I believe in miracles, and you're a God of miracles, and I'm tapping in to omnipotence today. Go on and praise him. Hallelujah to the Lamb. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, if you want the blessings of Abraham, you have to do what Abraham did. Amen. And that's the point of this message. The Bible says that Abraham, when he was called to go into a place, that he went out not knowing anything about where he was going. And it says, and he obeyed. That's the key to the blessings of God. He obeyed. Obedience is the key to getting the blessings of Abraham. He obeyed even though he did not know where he was going. People say, well, I wish that God would tell me all about my future. Well, God is not going to do that. He'll give you a word, and then you'll have to act on that word. If you decide, well, I want to come back to church tonight. I had such a great time this morning, and the message inspired me so much. Well, you have to get into your car, and you'll have to turn the lights on. Pastor Rick is preaching tonight, and I'm sure he's got a hot message. Amen. And people say, well, I wish I could see all the way to church. Well, you can't. You cannot see all the way to the church. But you can see only as far as your headlights shine. But if you drive in that light, you'll see a little more. And if you drive in that light, you'll see a little more. And if you drive in that, you'll get more. And if you drive in that, you'll get more light. Amen. And that's the way it works. And that's how you get to church. And that's for all those saints that come to Sunday morning service only. Hallelujah. You can get back to church tonight 
but you got to drive in the light that God gives you. God is not going to give you all of it at once. Walk in the light of his word, and if you will do that, he said that if you walk there, then I'll give you more light. Look at 1 John 1 and 7. God says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. So obedience is better than sacrifice. And I encourage you to obey God, because if you will obey God, the blessings of Abraham will come upon your life. God will give you what belongs to you. Obey God, because obedience is the key to the blessings. You say, well, pastor, I, I will obey God if I know what God wants me to do. Pastor, I will obey him. Will you? Will you obey God? If you will really want to obey God, then obey God in some simple things. If I told you some simple things that God wanted you to do, would you obey God? Amen. See, if you will begin with the simple things, God will give you more. And then God will give you more. And God will give you more as you walk in the light of his word. He can trust you with more and more as you walk in the light. He's just going to give you, however, a little headlight. And if you'll drive in that light, then he will give you a little bit more. And I have eight things this morning that I know these eight things are the will of God. And if you will obey them, God will bless you. And if you do not, he will not. Let me say that again. I have eight things. And if you will walk in these eight things, these simple things, and obey God, God will bless you. If you do not, God will not. I know I'm preaching to Christians this morning, but let me give you point number one. Point number one, God wants everyone to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. God wants everyone to accept Christ. That's the first step of obedience that anyone can take to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And in the book of Revelation, it says, the Spirit says, come. The bride says, come. Let him hear it that come, and whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. You say, well, I'm bad. I'm a sinner. I'm this, and I'm that. Well, God came into this world not to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Jesus Christ came to save sinners. God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. God would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. And so if you want to get on in on the blessings of Abraham... You've got to take the first step, and you've got to make Jesus Lord of your life. You don't just need a Savior. You need a Lord. You need someone that can guide you. You need someone that can direct you. You need someone that can say, this is the way, my child. Walk therein. And if you don't know the Word of God, then you won't understand the voice of God because God speaks through His Word. God speaks through His prophets. God speaks in many ways. He can speak to you through nature but this is how God talks to people right here don't just join the church praise God get saved get born again and then make Jesus Christ Lord of all hallelujah that's the first step to getting the blessings of Abraham step number two God expects every believer to be baptized in water by immersion and that's the reason for that first of all he wants to see if a new believer will obey him. Jesus said, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? God wants every believer to be baptized in water by immersion. Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples. Amen. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And then teach them. Hallelujah. So the first thing is get saved. And the second thing is be baptized. The Bible says in Romans 6 that we were buried with him by baptism unto death. 
Amen. And we're raised up with him to walk in the newness of life. Jesus went down in the water, and Jesus came up out of the water. And when he came up out of the water, the Father said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. And the Holy Ghost descended upon him. Jesus was walking in obedience to the word. And if you want the blessings of God, then walk in obedience to the word. He was emerged in water. Philip and the eunuch in Acts chapter 8 both went down into the water and Philip baptized that eunuch in the water. Hallelujah. So the Bible teaches that baptism is immersion in the water. The Greek word baptizo means to dip under, and there's a reason for that. When you first receive Jesus, you go and you present yourself to be baptized in water by immersion. I know that some people are sprinkled, and I know, know that others have water poured upon them, and I'm not making light of that. But water baptism, as far as God is concerned, is to preach a message to the world. It is an outward expression of an inward work that has already taken place in your heart. You don't get saved by being baptized in water. You're telling the world, I've been saved when you go down under the water and you come up. So when you go down in the water, you are buried. And that says, I believe that Jesus Christ came into this world, died for me, and he was buried. And then when you, they bring you up out of the water, you are saying, I believe he rose again from the dead. Hallelujah. And you are saying to the world, I used to be a sinner living like the world, but I've turned my back on that, and God has given me resurrection life. Hallelujah. I don't know if you can feel him. People say, I don't feel God. Well, I've felt him ever since I got saved. I'm not wondering where God is. God is where he's always been. God is in control. The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. If you'll put your hand in that nail-scarred hand, hallelujah, you'll walk through the battles, you'll walk through the flood, you'll walk through the waters, you'll go through the fire, and you'll come out the other side, and you won't even have the smell of smoke on you. God will save you. God will deliver you. God will heal you. God will bless you, because God is in the blessing business. Hallelujah. He said, I want my blessings to flow into your life so the world can know there's power, power, power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Go on and praise him. Hallelujah. That you've been saved and washed and cleansed by the precious blood. Hallelujah. So when I go down in the water, I'm burying the old man. And when I'm coming up out of it, I'm saying, look, devil, I'm a new man. <laughs> Hallelujah. And not only that, one day if Jesus tarries, this old body is going to die. And they're going to plant me in the ground somewhere. But when I come up out of that water, I'm saying, ain't no grave going to hold this body down. Woo! I'm coming up. Jesus came up, and I'm coming up. Glory to God. I might come up the rough side of the mountain someday, but let me tell you, I've got my eyes set upon the sky. If you then be risen with Christ, set your affection upon things above and not upon the things of the earth. And when Christ, which is our life, shall appear, then shall we appear with him in glory. When he appears, I'm going to disappear. When he comes, I'm going to go. Is that your testimony that you got resurrection power in your life and in your heart today? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God. We're going to be resurrected. So don't destroy the message of water baptism by changing the mood. Amen. Real baptism is immersion of a born-again believer in water to be planted and to be raised again. Point number three. Make a clean break with the world and obey God. I'm talking about some simple things that will activate the blessings of Abraham in your life. Make a clean break with the world and obey God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, be not conformed to this world. The Bible says to put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man, which is created in righteousness and holiness. If you're going to obey God, the Bible says, whosoever is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. I know that's not popular preaching, but it's still the Word of God. And look at this, 1 John 2 and 15. God says, love not the world, neither things that are in the world. If any man love the world, 
The love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God shall abide forever. He said, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. He said, I'm the true vine, you're the branch. He said, abide in me and I in you that you might bring forth fruit. Then he said, I want you to bring forth more fruit. Then he said, I want you to bring forth much fruit. And that's what growing in God is all about. God said, if I can give you a little bit and you'll use that and you'll walk in that light, then I'll give you some more. And if you'll walk in that, then I'll give you some more. And I'll just keep on. I told Abraham, I want you to get out. And once you get out, Abraham, I'm going to show you some things. And after I show you some things, Abraham, I'm going to make you. And after I make you, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And after I bless you, Abraham, I'm going to make you a blessing. Isn't that the light you want to walk in? Go on and praise him for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of God. Oh, my friends, we need to obey God. And we need to break with the world. Throw your drinking off. Throw your drugs away. Throw the lust out. Break with living like the world. Break with acting like the world. Amen. Don't live halfway in and halfway out. The half-hearted soon become the faint-hearted. Amen. Break with the world. That's God's command. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord God of hosts. He said, and I'll receive you, and I'll bless you, and I'll make you a blessing. And everything you touch, I bless it. Hallelujah. Everywhere you go, people will feel my presence. Everything you do, I'll put my seal of approval upon it. And I'll bless your life. I'll, I'll, I'll make you the head and not the tail. I'll make you above only and not beneath. God said, I'm a blesser. And I want to bless you because you're my child. Go on, praise him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Point number four, if you want the blessings of Abraham... Every believer ought to belong to a good local church. Every believer ought to belong to a good local church. You ought to belong to the local church somewhere. And you ought to go there regularly. That's where you are taught. That's where you are trained. That's where you get the word of God. That's where you are to fellowship with people of like precious faith. Every believer ought to have a local church and have a local shepherd to be tied to that local church and to be tied into what God wants to do in that local church. People got all kind of ideas about it. I'm not giving you my idea. I'm giving you what the Word of God says. And if you walk in the light of God's Word, God will give you more. And if you walk in that light, he'll give you more. If you just keep on walking in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus will constantly cleanse you. We're in a world of sin, and we need to be cleansed. We need the washing of the water of the word of God. We need the washing of the blood. We need to be washed by the power of the Holy Ghost. God said, sanctify yourself. He said, come out from among them, and I'll bless you, and I'll make you a blessing. Go on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. People say, well, I can worship God out on the golf course as well as I can in church. That's the devil's lie. No, you cannot. Nobody's preaching the gospel out on the golf course. Somebody said, I can worship God in the mountains. That's all right. Go to the mountains on Monday and Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. But come to church on Sunday and on Wednesday and be taught the word of God. Hallelujah. You can admire the mountains. You can look at them forever, but you're not going to get any word taught to you by looking at the mountains. Come to the church. Glory to God. Get connected to a good local church. Get on the shepherd that has the fire and the power of God. Somebody that can teach you the word of God. Somebody that can impart spiritual gifts to you. Somebody that can lay hands on you. Hallelujah. And deliver you from the chains of darkness. Glory to God. Get in a good local church. Come on. Praise God. Praise God that you're in church today. Thank God for the church. Thank God for his church. Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Get connected to the church. Stay in the church and God's blessings will flow to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. A Christian ought to obey God. They ought to go to church. Look at Hebrews 10, 25. 
not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together as the man of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. What day is he talking about? He's talking about the end times and the coming of the Lord. So you need to belong to a local church, and you need to come to that church on a regular basis. How do you activate the blessings of Abraham? How do you activate the favor of God? I'm giving you eight simple things that if you walk in this light, I promise you on the authority of God's word, God's blessings will overtake you. Number five, read your Bible every day. Don't let a day go by without reading your Bible. Wouldn't you feel a little weak if you didn't eat something every day? Well, if you only feed your spirit man once in a while or once a week, do you think you're going to get strong by that? It will never happen. It will never, never happen unless you feed the spirit the word of God on a daily basis. So read your Bible every day. Amen. It's soul food. I, I love good soul food. Amen. I, I'm a, a bread and potato man, and I like vegetables, but I like good soul cooking. Amen. If you never had any good soul cooking cooked by a soul sister, you don't even have any idea what I'm talking about. But my wife and I, she's not a soul sister, but she's a good sister. Hallelujah. And we've been eating out some here lately, and I told her, I said, I'm looking forward to getting home and to getting some food from Teresa's kitchen. Amen. I tell you, she can cook. She's a good wife. She found out the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Amen. Hallelujah. And she's a good cook, and I praise God for her. He did find us a wife, find us a good thing, and obtain it favor of the Lord. But read your Bible every day and meditate on its promises. Look at this right here, Proverbs 4 and 20. God said, my son, attend to my word. I'm talking about reading your Bible every day. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are life to those that find them and health to all that flesh. I can be up here preaching the word of God, hallelujah, and all of a sudden I'll just get healed. I've had people tell me while you were preaching the word, God healed me. I've had others say while you were preaching, God gave me my answer. God stepped into the situation and God moved and God changed that. That's the kind of God I serve. That's the power of the blood. That's the reason God wants people to come out of darkness into the light. He wants to bless your life. He's the God of blessing. Go on and praise him. Hallelujah. He said, keep thy heart with all diligence. Proverbs 4 and 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You say, well, I don't know what to do, Pastor. I don't know what to do in this situation. God said, you ought to pray every day. Read my book. Amen. And if you do, when the issues of life come, I'll show you. I'll order your steps. And I'll order your stops. Some people said he just orders my steps. No, he tells stop sometime. Hallelujah. Ever had God tell you to stop? There's danger ahead. And you just pull over. Get on down the road. And there's been a big wreck down there. God was ordering your stops. But a good man, somebody that obeys God, God will order their steps, and God will order their stops. Hallelujah. We're talking about activating the blessings of Abraham. Number six, learn to pray, and pray every day. Learn to pray, and pray every day. Some people say, well, I don't know how to pray, Pastor. Then get around some people that do know how to pray. That's why you need the church. That's why you need to belong to a local church. We have a prayer meeting every Friday night here in this church. Prayer is more caught than taught. Amen. So learn to pray by listening to prayer warriors pray. Hallelujah. There's a tangibility to the Spirit. And when you get around the power of the Spirit, all of a sudden, something happens to you. We had one lady that came here to our Friday night prayer meeting, Presbyterian. 
And she just started hearing these little utterances in her mind, and she didn't know what they were. And one of our good brothers explained it to her, hallelujah, and all of a sudden she realized it was the Holy Ghost, and she just started speaking what she'd been hearing in her mind and was filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. When you don't know how to pray, the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Get full of the Holy Ghost. When you don't know how to pray, if any man pray in an unknown tongue, his spirit pray it. He's speaking not unto men, but unto God. How be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. So pray and pray every day and get around people that know how to pray. Hallelujah. Prayer is simply talking to God. You don't have to get on your knees. You can if you want to. You can stand up or you can walk around or you can lie down. You can pray in your bed. You can pray driving your car. You can pray in the swimming pool. You can pray jogging or exercising. Just talk to God wherever you are. You don't have to use thee and thou. God understands plain old southern English. Amen. Just talk to God and say, God, here I am. I'm saved. I'm yours, God. So guide me today. Lead me today. Help me to live for you today, Lord. And help me to be bold about it. Help me, Lord, to be a witness. Help me, Lord, to be a blessing to others. Pray and pray every day. That's how you talk to God. And and another way you talk to God, as I covered it earlier, read your Bible every day. That's God speaking to you. And and who wants a one-way conversation? I don't. Amen. I want to be able to dialogue back and forth. I want to say this is what I need. Now, what do you need? God said, I just need for you to obey me. I I have everything. I control everything. But I want you to walk in the light of my word and I want you to obey some simple things and if you will obey them, then I will bless your life. Point number seven, obtaining the blessings of Abraham. Be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's his command. That's his commandment. Abraham obeyed, and God blessed him. Amen. I I want you to put um, Genesis 18, 19 up, please. I want to show you something about Abraham. God told him, said, five things in Genesis 12 and 1, but in Genesis 18, 19, here's what God spoke to him. See, I'm talking to you about how to activate the blessings of God in your life. God had been watching Abraham. And God says, for I know him. I've been watching him. I told him some things to do from my word. God spoke the word to him. God's speaking to you today through my my lips of clay. I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. And here's the key. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. What did God speak of him? He said, Abraham, I want you to get out. And after you get out, I'll show you some things. Sounds like coming to church, doesn't it? Reading your Bible. He said, and after I show you some things, Abraham, I'm going to make you. And after I make you into what I purpose for your life to be, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And after I bless you, woo! Goodness and mercy. They follow me everywhere I go. He said, I'm going to make you a blessing. Isn't that what you want in your life? Abraham obeyed. So Jesus said, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. So you need to realize that to obey God is to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad that people like to come to church here. I'm glad for the classes and the events and for the training that's going on here. But our witness is not just to talk about this church, but our witness is to talk about Jesus. Amen. Go to people and share with them what Jesus has done for you. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Jesus delivered a demoniac that had 6,000 demons in him. The man had been running around naked. Jesus delivered him, and when the people came to him, they found him clothed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, and in his right mind. 
And do you know what Jesus told that man to do? He said, go home. Go home and tell the people what great things God has done for you. If you see when Jesus cast those pigs out there, that was in Decropolis. He came back to that area. This man had gone and evangelized the whole area. And all the people came to him on that day. God is a great God. Go tell somebody about Jesus. Do people around you know that you're a Christian? Do they know it on the job? Amen. See, we ought to share with people what Jesus has done for us. Tell people how he saved you. Tell people how he broke the power of the devil off of your life. Tell people that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Hallelujah. Tell people that God loves them. Tell people that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Be a witness and tell somebody about Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't have to be a preacher. Preaching is when you got a prepared sermon and you get up and you preach the word of God. But anybody can be a witness and we're all ministers for the Lord Jesus Christ. So just tell people about Jesus and what Jesus has done for you. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for what the Lord has done for you? Aren't you glad for how he touched you with that nail-scarred hand and changed you from nature? Glory to God, over into grace. And you became a partaker of God's divine nature. Hallelujah. How do you activate the blessings of God? Number eight, honor God with your money. Honor God with your money. The Bible says the tithe is the Lord's. The first dime out of every dollar of your increase, it belongs to the Lord. And if you spend it, you are spending stolen money because that money belongs to God. People say, well, that was in the law. That's true. It was in the law. But it was more than 430 years before the law. Abraham tithe. His family tithe. Many years before the law was ever given. And Jesus commended tithing in the New Testament. And you need to realize that you belong to God and everything that you have belongs to God. And God belongs to you, and everything God has belongs to you. God said, well, a man robbed God. He said, but you have robbed me. They said, how? He begins to talk about money. He says, in tithes and offerings. He said, you've robbed me. See, God doesn't need your money. God needs your obedience. He said, you've robbed me of the opportunity to bless you. You've robbed me of the opportunity to open the windows of heaven. For you out of blessing, there'll not be room enough to receive it. You've robbed me of the opportunity to rebuke the devourer for your sake. You have robbed me because you didn't tap into my plan. I have a plan for your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So give God the first tenth. Amen. And that proves that God is first in your life. That proves that you love God first. Amen. And give, give over and above the tithe, and that's called offerings. That's God's plan. He doesn't need your money. He doesn't need my money, but he has a plan to bless your life. It's called seed time and harvest time. He said, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. Day and night, cold and winter, heat and summer. God says, just like you see the seasons changing, that's how my kingdom works. Hallelujah. He said, I set up a seed time, harvest time. And, and then God turns around and gives seed to the sower. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at Proverbs 3 and 9. God says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So shall thy bonds be filled with plenty. God's dream is to fill your bonds, your bank account with plenty. That's God's plan for you. God's dream is to give you a life of abundance. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's God's plan for your life. But he cannot do that if you're stingy and if you steal and you will not plant your seed into his kingdom. God said, will a man rob God? I'm trying to get the blessings 
of Abraham into your life. And I've given you eight simple things that will bring those blessings into your life. I close with this, Deuteronomy 28 and 1. I want you to see this and read it with me. You can just follow me on the screen. It came, it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And then he begins to list the blessings. Look at verse 3. God said, if you will obey me, if you'll keep my commandments, if you do what I've told you to do, blessed shall thou be in the city, blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. He's talking about your children. Hallelujah. And the fruit of thy ground. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thy be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thy be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face, yes. and they shall come against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Hallelujah. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouse in all that thou sittest thy hands unto. Yes, Verse 13. I love this. Deuteronomy 28 and 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Yes. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day yes. to observe and to do. We're talking about activating the blessings of Abraham. And if you will do those simple eight things that I have listed from the Word of God, God will bless you with more and more. Let us stand. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That not only do we have the blessings of Abraham, but, Father, we have Christ, and we as and join us with him in his kingdom. I give myself away. I give myself, I give myself Lord. Away so you That's what God wants. Can use he wants your heart. I give myself All of it. away. He wants you to obey him. I give myself because God away. is your father. So and God you wants his blessings can use me. to come upon your life. I, give myself away. I know that the people in this church that I'm looking at, I know you're saved. But if you're not saved today, the first step that I listed is the step. First step into the blessings of Abraham. Give your heart to Jesus and make him Lord of your life. And you do that simply by saying, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I acknowledge my sin and I believe you came into this world. You went to an old rugged cross. You took my sin, my sickness, and my disease. Maybe you need healing this morning. Healing's in the atonement. Come to him and say, Lord, I come to you for my healing. I believe you took those stripes. And I believe I'm healed. And I praise you and I thank you for coming into my heart, Lord, and saving me. I praise you, Lord, that you're the God of all flesh. And that's nothing too hard for God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We love you, Lord. I give myself away. I give myself away. I give myself away so you 